rewind. Rewind, yes. Just because I see, I see mistakes. Oh, yes. And confusion. Tell us about mistakes yeah. and confusion. You know, Especially so... Especially small organizations oh struggle my gosh, with that. Right? So, I mean, I literally was on the phone last week with a woman for an hour who had no idea what should go into her chart of accounts. So she had every person who had ever paid her money was listed in her chart of accounts as an income account. And I've seen other organizations where, you know, they expected staff members to fundraise. And mm-hmm. so they tracked each staff mem- member as an income account and literally said, Susan, Mary, well, Nancy, I mean, Steve. I can see why people running a nonprofit want to do that. I can see why they want to know <laughs> that information. they want to know if their employees are being good fundraisers or whether they're, you know, maybe they're program managers and they're like, hey, are you bringing in the money that pays for the cost of the program yeah, you're running? Yeah. But it's like a conflation of that doesn't, that's not supposed to live yeah, no. in the accounting system. You know, when you file your taxes, it doesn't have a line for Steve. Right. The IRS right? doesn't care if, you know, Sandra is raising enough money to you know, fund the, her program that she manages. Right. That's not so, a thing. Right, right. It's not a thing. So what the IRS is going to want to know, like, what did you get from individuals? What did you get from corporations? What did you bring in with memberships or program service fees or, you know, yeah. from consolidated fundraising activities like the United Way, you know? Yep. And when they look at your expenses, those want to be natural categories too. Like anybody looking at your expenses should understand what goes in there. Well, and I think that's the thing is like for these, especially smaller organizations, that does make sense to them. When well, they're when they're doing it that way, it's because it does make sense to them. And to your yeah. point, the example of like every donor who ever gave or every, you know, having their own category, that probably makes perfect sense it to does. someone who is not financially savvy, doesn't understand accounting, but it's like, I want to know, you know, how much did uh, Tom Smith give this year? Well, duh, of, it's course, right there. I, of course I'm going to keep track of it that way. Who yeah. wouldn't understand that if they looked at it? Right. But that's right. why it's so critical to get professional guidance because that is not actually the way you want to do it. For sure. Or you might see something like, you know, on the expense side, you'll see fundraising. And they'll just drop all the fundraising expenses. You know, the fundraiser, the grant writer, the printing, the postage, the mailhouse expenses, the big event, all goes into that one line. Because yeah. because somebody wanted to know, what are we spending on fundraising? And you do need to be able to track that and come up with an answer. But what we're going to need to do your 990 is, what did you spend on printing overall? And if I have to, like, dig down in there... Yeah. You know, if your tax guy has to dig down into all of your little accounts to parse out what might be printing, he's going to charge you a lot more. Yeah. Right. Right. So in the the end, I think, like, all roads lead back to (laughs) get good professional help because uh, we could spend six hours talking about these financial basics (laughs) and you still wouldn't understand how to do it because it's not uh, why you're running this nonprofit, right? So find the Megans of the world and get help so that you can set up your chart of accounts and your statement of functional expense the right way. 